welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And I should say happy 2020, guys. This is the first video that I'm recording in the new year, and I'm excited to finally be back on YouTube. I took a tiny little break in the Christmas period because I got really sick. I had strep throat, and then I just decided to get well and focus on having a really nice Christmas with my family and loved ones. So I'm happy to be back on YouTube, and I'm excited to make this video because this video is a little bit different from my usual videos. I've done one video like this before and I figured in the new year my favorite goal to set for myself is a reading goal. This past year I read 25 books and I'm really happy that I did that because it was quite a struggle. It ended up happening that I finished the last book on the 31st so I made it just on time to accomplish my reading goal so I was really proud of myself and I decided to make this video because I read some really good books last year. I'm going to be telling you the five best books that I read last year. So definitely, if you haven't given these books a try, you really should moving on into 2020. And of course, this isn't sponsored by any means, but I really love the app Goodreads. It's how I find a lot of really great new books for myself. So without Goodreads, I mean, I probably wouldn't ever accomplish these reading goals. And it's really fun to set a new goal on there as well. But without further ado and without talking too much, which I tend to do, here are the five best books that I read last year. cool thing about Goodreads is that I'm literally going through my past challenges and I'm going through last year's list so I can remember what I read and what I really liked about it. So the first book that I really loved from last year, it literally came out at December of 2018 so it was fairly new to 2019 and it was one of the first books that I read this past year and I loved it. It would be more in the thriller category of things. This author Colleen Hoover is known for writing amazing romance books that aren't too corny so when I want a good romance I always pick up some of her books which are great. This was a different one from her and this was called Verity by Colleen Hoover like I said and it was amazing. This is the kind of book that you literally cannot put down so I would really recommend it for even traveling when you want that really good book to read at the beach or on the plane and you just want something to keep your attention. This was definitely it. It was so addictive. I don't want to give anything away because it is a thriller and I don't want to accidentally spoil anything but essentially it just caught my attention from the first page. It just really starts out heavy and then goes on and on from that point on. And there's a certain point in the book where you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot put this down. So I honestly ended up finishing this in literally a couple of days. It was so good. And essentially the plot is about this author named Lowen and she is a writer. So she accepts the job offer of a lifetime and she ends up getting hired to finish writing this really popular series by a really popular author. And she's hired by the woman's husband. And it's just so juicy and so interesting. She ends up moving into the house, which we find out super early on. She ends up moving into the house in order to write this book. And she sort of does a little bit of digging and uncovers things and it's so twisted and it's so good and there's like suspense there's a little bit of romance in there it's just such a great thriller so I highly highly recommend this book I could not put it down This next book is quite different from all the other ones in this top five category that I'm creating, but it was really important to me. And last year I ended up visiting the Auschwitz concentration camp. I ended up reading this book right before I visited the concentration camp, which was even more meaningful for me. Now this was a great book and I'm no stranger to reading about Auschwitz and the concentration camps there and World War II in general. I find it a very interesting and tragic topic and I really do, have a passion for these sort of books so I'm happy that I ended up reading this because this is sort of a classic I would say one of the top three even holocaust books uh, that you should definitely make a point to read. This is called Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankel. Now, I was under the impression that this was going to sort of be a more autobiographical story and we would hear more of his firsthand account of the horrors that happened in the concentration camp because he was in the camps and he was a survivor of the concentration camps. So I was interested in reading about his memoir. Half of the book is sort of his memoir, not detailed 
enough, which is fine, but the other half is sort of like a psychological assessment of his experiences in both the concentration camps as well as pre and post war. He had a way of just sort of putting a positive spin on the whole human condition and the survival aspect of it all, which was really nice. It wasn't a depressing read considering the subject matter and it was a very important read. So if you're fascinated in the subject matter, I highly recommend it. Basically, he taught readers also about logotherapy, which teaches that there are three main avenues on which one arrives at meaning in life. The first is by creating a work or by doing a deed. The second is by experiencing something or encouraging someone. In other words, meaning can be found not only in work, but also in love. And most important is the third avenue to meaning in life. Even the helpless victim of a hopeless situation facing a fate that he cannot change may rise above himself, may grow beyond himself, and by doing so, change himself. He may turn a personal tragedy into a triumph. So I felt like this was the whole meaning behind his book was truly to find meaning even in a situation which seemed meaningless. So I saved that quote and I loved that quote and I really did love his teachings. And it really goes to show you that even if you find that you're in a horrible situation or your life lacks meaning, there's always something to be found in the toughest of situations. So this book was surprisingly hopeful and I really loved it. Highly recommended. book was quite new last year it came out in March of 2019 and I picked it up right away I don't know what called me to this book because it was never recommended to me but probably the fact that it had such great reviews on Goodreads I'm always checking the reviews here and I am so happy that I stumbled upon this book it was absolutely phenomenal it is a work of fiction and it is sort of a romance meets not really a thriller but it is a sort of mysterious aspect that you have to uncover basically a mysterious child who you can be led to believe is possibly an alien as she calls herself teaches two strangers how to love and trust again so you're essentially taken on a journey through this child into the two lives of these people this man and woman and it is such an incredible story and what i loved about it were the characters were so unique and flawed in a way that I've never really read before and I was just so attached to the characters. All three of them really had my heart and it is such an interesting, heartwarming book without being at all corny or cheesy. It was just, I don't know, one. I think honestly one of the best books that I read last year and easily one of my favorite books that I've ever read. It was that good. I think I gave it a five out of five stars. It was so beautiful. This story was incredible and I highly recommend this book. Out of all the books that I'm talking about, this was easily one of my favorites because it was such an unexpected, just unexpectedly great book and I love when that happens. I guess the fact that I went into it not knowing too much about it and just really falling in love with the story and its characters and not necessarily having the highest of expectations because I had no idea, no one personally recommended it to me. I just fell in love with this book so I'm recommending it to you guys. I would say go into this without really knowing that much about it but just knowing that it's definitely a page turner it's an interesting book and it is just such a heartwarming beautiful story and the characters will stay with you long after you've read it and this book came to me when i was going through a reading rut i was just reading books that weren't so great so when i came across this book and i couldn't put it down i knew i found a little gem so i highly recommend where the forest meets the stars by glendy vandera book that I'm going to be talking about is called Recursion by Blake Crouch and now this is the second book by this author that I'm reading. I read one last year called Dark Matter and I was obsessed with this book. It was like unlike anything I had ever read and it was easily one of my favorite books as well. It was so so good. So when I discovered that this author came out with this book last year of 2019, meaning this is a new book. I was so excited to read it and I could not put this down. Now this author is sort of famous for writing, I would say sci-fi thrillers. So I think that it would be in the realm of a sci-fi thriller and it was so addictive. It sort of reminds me of like a twisted episode of Dark Mirror, <laughs> which is I think why I really like this book. I'm a fan of that series as well. 
Dark Mirror on Netflix if you guys know it. I'm always wondering like what, what could happen in this lifetime if something changed just a tiny bit or if we advanced just a little bit more and this book sort of gives you the answers to those kind of things. Now unlike the other book, this book dealt with memory specifically and what I really liked is that it deals with the deep fundamental question of what if. Do you ever have those what if moments where what if you did something differently in life or what if you did this instead of this, where would your life be? This sort of answers that question for you in such a scientific and like creepy, interesting way. It's so good. I know I might not be doing enough justice explaining this book for you, but you really should just go into this without really knowing much. Again, I'm always saying that, but I feel like that is the best way to read a book. Definitely not your average read. This is something else. I love this author. He just does this sci-fi mystery thriller in such an interesting way and his books are so hard to put down. Last but not least, this is probably going to surprise you guys because it surprised me too, but I have never read Harry Potter or the Harry Potter series. I remember seeing, I think, up to the second movie when I realized, you know what, I should probably read these books. I remember reading the first book when I was really, really young on a plane, and I think I read like 50 pages of it before I stopped reading and I just never picked it up again, and I don't know why, because I was so interested in the story. When the first Harry Potter came out, I really gave it a chance and I loved it, but for whatever reason, I stopped reading it. And I've always regretted that, so after seeing the films, I was like, you know what, I need to read these books. I'm gonna stop right here. So I think I stopped at the second movie and I gave these books a try. So what I did last year was I would read one book and then read a different book in between and then pick up the second book and read one in between just so I wasn't reading Harry Potter the whole year. I started this at the end so I only got up to the third book and the third book was my favorite of the Harry Potter series so far. That's all I've read up to the third book. And it is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban but I'm not necessarily just recommending that book. I'm recommending all of the Harry Potter books because if you haven't read them, it is so nice to finally feel like I'm in on the Harry Potter experience. I always hear people talking about Harry Potter related things like Butterbeer and Hogwarts and I'm so excited that I finally know exactly what is going on. I feel like I'm up to date and I'm included in this wizarding magical world of Harry Potter and it is about time. Literally at 31 years old, it took me until now to start reading Harry Potter. I heard that they even get better and better as they get a little bit longer and you're more involved in the storyline but honestly all three books have been a pleasure to read so far with the third being so far my favorite so I'm really excited about it. Let me know if you guys are reading Harry Potter, have read them or are at all interested in reading Harry Potter. She is an absolute genius and I mean the stories that she has up her sleeves to keep putting these interesting plot twists and these new characters and new stories that all tie in together. The woman is a genius. It is such a joy to read. So I'm finally happy to be reading Harry Potter. So guys, that's it. Those were the best books or even series that I read last year of 2019. I'm excited to be reading more this year in 2020. If you guys do like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to maybe make this a yearly thing. And if you guys would like as well, let me know in the comments down below. Would you like to know my top five or even 10 favorite books of all times because I have read quite a few books up to date. I think almost 200, I can't remember. So I'd really love to share those with you as well. If you're curious to know my favorite books of all time, please let me know down below and I would love to make a reading inspired video for you guys. I hope that you do enjoy these kind of videos because I love reading. It's something that I surprisingly picked up later in life and there's nothing better than being recommended a great book that is truly great and hard to put down. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will of course see you in my next video. Bye guys.